Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon. Um, I'm very happy to welcome you to this live session today. It's been a while. So this is very exciting. Uh, for those who don't know me yet, my name is Carol and I am the founder of Parentally and we are a platform dedicated to supporting the well-being of new and future parents. And we do so by facilitating access to informational support, community support and professional support. Uh, through our network of uh, specialists, professionals who support parents through throughout parenthood, so during pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and the first years of parenthood. Um, today we are going to talk about a very uh, exciting and very promising <laughs> topic, orgasmic birth. Uh, thank you very much much for joining us and our guest today is uh, Inbol Zingler, Ziegler and I will leave you uh, to floor Inbol to uh, maybe start by uh, introducing yourself. I will, yes. thank you and also funny enough the word orgasm or orgasmic it comes from the Greek word orgasmus which means excitement. Ah. So, oh, to, yes, to begin with, I'm very excited uh, to be here and for this opportunity to, to share what it is really about. Um, a few words about myself. I'm a mother of three amazing boys. All of them were born here in the Netherlands. And what brought me to this theme, it's indeed this birth, because my first one was the complete opposite of being orgasmic, uh, mm -hmm. to say the least. And that made me question and go deeper and really explore uh, what birth is and how it could be. And this journey led me to experience two consecutive orgasmic births, which we're okay. going to talk about. Um, so yes, my main core, my main uh, interest is all related to, to this very meaningful rites of passage that we as women go through from conception to pregnancy, birth, uh, womanhood in general, and the sacred feminine. This is, the, this is what I do. Awesome. And I'm very grateful that you uh, accepted to, to join us and do this session together today. And you've been one of the uh, early supporters of Parentally, so I'm very thankful for that. Um, let's dive into the topic directly. Yeah? Um, so orgasmic birth, it's uh, also known as ecstatic birth, like you explained. Can you explain what, what, is, what it is exactly and how it differs from, um, let's say, conventional uh, birth? You brought up already the term ecstatic, and yeah. it's, a, it's a great um, point to begin with, because also from linguistic, linguistic wise, from language perspective, ecstatic stands for ex, external, mm -hmm. stasis, state, meaning birth, like many other uh, spiritual awakening uh, human experiences, they are experiences that take place outside of the ordinary, mm -hmm. outside of the everyday life. So when we speak about orgasmic ecstatic birth, this is also one layer to it. And I think that a lot of us, we carry, including myself, before I went deeper into that, we carry this uh, miscon mi misconception when it comes to orgasmic birth. We tend to think that it's related to an orgasm, mm -hmm. uh, like a sexual climax, and mm -hmm. it, it's not wrong. It is related, it is embedded into the blueprint of birth, the code of birth. And I'm, I'm using this term because as much as birth is a very personal and unique experience that every woman will create and experience by herself and through herself, it also has a universal code. There is a template. There is a, a very specific landscape when, when it's being left uninterrupted mm -hmm. and when these code is being left to play out by itself, this incredible intelligence of the feminine body has the opportunity to show up and really to lead mother and baby in a very safe, in a very smooth, in a very straightforward and way to throughout the birth and to the actual emergence of, her, of the baby and the mother herself, mm -hmm. because we are being born as a complete different uh, identity through mm -hmm. our pregnancy and birth. 
So, of course, there is a connection between sexuality and birth. I see birth as an extension of our sexuality because in the majority of cases, <laughs> right, we came together, hopefully in a very passionate um, and engaged and intimate manner to conceive mm -hmm. this child. Mm -hmm. And even if it's an assisted conception, mm -hmm. there is a very there are many ways to make it intentional yeah and mm -hmm. to base it with our love as well and hopefully this is the form that most babies are being uh, conceived mm -hmm. um, with that there is all you know when we speak about orgasm most of us we refer to the more short-lived quick rushed uh, physical mm -hmm. bliss that comes from a clitoral orgasm yes which is beautiful as itself. But as we know, as, as, as female, as women, our um, sexuality and sexual structures and functions and potential is much more wider with, for, we, uh, from that. We have also vaginal mm -hmm. orgasm, mm -hmm. become what is known as the G-spot, which is more emotional, which is more cleansing, energetic, uh, interpersonal. And if we go deeper into the yoni or higher, you know, the, the, the top of the mountain uh, orgasm, we have a cervical orgasm, which is more, um, it's more soulful, it's more spiritual, it's more ecstatic, it holds the qualities of oneness, mm -hmm. of expansiveness. And during birth, what happens is that the cervix, the keeper of the mm. womb, this organ mm. that is placed really, really deep inside of us. And not only physically, it's, you know, it's the entrance to the sanctum, to the womb. It's super sensitive and delicate and fragile. And it's also connected to the heart energetically. Mm -hmm. So when we are surrounded by conditions that project love and safety and we feel um, trustful, mm -hmm. not only in our surrounding, but first and foremost in ourselves to let go and to be taken. Like really, you know, I, I suggest you and, and everyone who hears, who hears us now, take yourself on your mind to this uh, um, ambience of making love when we are really, you know, we're engaged into it. And we forget the dishes in the sink and we forget the to-do list and we are completely engaged, right? And there's this spontaneous, intuitive, reflexive express, you know, flow. Mm -hmm. This is or the orgasmic. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. But yeah. No, I, 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 I totally get that. And I think that's going to be my, my next question. But you know, the truth is when you hear something like this, it's very, uh, it's kind of mysterious because you do associate orgasm with, uh, with the climax, you know, and you wonder because you don't really necessarily associate birth with sexual thoughts, you know, so it's always a bit, uh, it can be a bit, uh, you know, um yeah mysterious and uh, um you wonder is it is it is it a myth or is it really reality like does it really happen and i was very curious to to you know to 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 look if there was any uh, kind of uh, scientific research done or study or anything on this topic so i did a little bit of research and um and i, I think it's uh, it's uh, quite interesting to look into this um yeah, there is a lot of, of online anecdotal uh, literature about orgasmic birth, but there have been quite a few, uh, I think, interesting things that I've found. So the first one is the movie. Of course, I think uh, maybe some people have uh, heard about this movie called uh, Orgasmic Birth. Um, By the best kept secret. Yes, Deb exactly. Or up Absolutely. Yes, and um, narrated by uh, the great also Ina Megaskin. Um, there was also a very interesting article published in the British Journal of uh, Midwifery in 2021. 
uh, which I recommend to read, to read to anyone who is interested in this topic. And then also there was actually a survey done by a French psychologist, so the French, <laughs> uh, the, expert, the expert in romance and passion Absolutely. and love. It had to be a French guy and he contacted almost a thousand midwives who had assisted uh, together over 200,000 births. Um, and just in a nutshell, uh, the results of the survey was that 0.3% uh, of the births that they had assisted were um, resulted in uh, orgasmic births. So this is the information I could find online. And yes, there have it exists, it exists. Um, not everyone will experience this, but it exists under the right conditions, like you said, in the right circumstances. Um, and that is actually my, my next question. Is it, how do you prepare for, for uh, uh, orgasmic birth or how can you, I don't know how to, to express this. How can, but can you, you yes. how can you experience an orgasmic birth? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Is it possible to prepare for this and how? <laughs> course it is possible and just to elaborate slightly more on what you brought up the reason why it's still considered to be a myth or something that is reserved mm. only to the women who birth around dolphins or have a, a chorus of angel accompanying their birth the reason why it's still considered to be rare it's because indeed the way birth is being manipulated, mistreated, pathologized, mm -hmm. and abused by the current structures, which are, the, the ex because birth still takes place in the majority of cases in a hospital setting, mm -hmm. which is, as we know, medical, clinical, bound to graphs and, and numbers. And, you know, it's a very masculine way to, to handle this very feminine, mysterious unpredictable territory there is such a contract contrast and such a conflict and such a distortion in 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 relation to the basic conditions that a woman has to must have in order to experience indeed the pure potent potential of birth because mm -hmm. i this is the thing I'll tell you a story that is related, which yeah. happens a couple of weeks ago. Parallel to my work with parents and mothers and couples, I also um, work with birth professionals, midwives, mm -hmm. obstetrician, doulas, etc. Um, to, uh, to make it available, this knowledge, this wisdom about orgasmic birth. And I had a conversation with the doula about it, and she said to me, uh, the audience for orgasmic birth is too small. Mm. And on one, one hand, uh, I thank her for that observation because indeed it, it, it brings up to the surface, it shines light on a collective blind spot because we all think, again, it's something that is excluded mm. to a small percentage as the, as the evidence show. Mm. But on the other hand, it made me uh, laugh a bit because as I said before, this is the essence of birth. This is the template of birth. Birth is designed to be a gate to humanity, both for the mother and both to the baby, for them to be welcomed in the most, in the outmost love mm -hmm. and euphoria and reverence. It's tr truly la grande trans. Mm -hmm. You're, you say you will say it. It will sound yeah. even even better. <laughs> but and because when women um, and we had this prior conversation before, you remember we were discussing yeah. we were discussing mm, maybe about feminism and birth. And now I'm going to bring the feminist yes. perspective to it because when a woman experiences birth on its full potential, and she does feel as if she's an Every woman who gave birth in this way will tell you that we feel like a super woman. Mm -hmm. We feel on the top of the world. Nothing, nothing can stop us. So there's a great power instilled into birth for many reasons. Also for the main, the main one is for us as mothers to be completely competent and mm -hmm. resourced 
to take care of a tiny precious human being that asks attention, love, resources 24 seven, right? Mm -hmm. Every mother will tell you that. So if we experience birth in such a way that we emerge from it, feeling on top of the world, imagine how, you know, no one will, will dare to mess with women. So that's why I'm saying there's a lot of power and wisdom instilled into this gate. And this is also part of the reason why there are so many interests and forces and literally hands. Let's speak about the vaginal mm -hmm. continuous uh, examination that takes place where, that takes place where in our cervix, mm -hmm. which is again, as we said before, the most intimate, you know, part of us. So this is why to our question why we don't hear more and more, but don't worry, I'm working on that because <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm for a globe planetary revolution about birth. I want every woman to own her power and to, you know, really um, embody mm -hmm. this experience. Um, yeah, so that will happen. And, 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 it, and it happens, you know, it becomes, the, there's a, a shift in the collective awareness. More and more people, you know, um, are feeling called to that. Even if they don't know what it is, they are feel they are feeling drawn to that mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it, it speaks truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, uh, I think, uh, like uh, very rightfully so, that, uh, you know, um, uh, births are more and more medicalized and it happens most of the time maybe not in the Netherlands but yes still uh, in percentages yes uh, in hospitals um, and we were talking about the conditions to make uh, orgasmic birth happen yes. so if I under understand correctly uh, what is important I think that's one of the discussions I've had most with uh, doulas and other professionals uh, enlisted on parentally is that births ideally should be undisturbed so you talk about the vaginal examination and all these kind of things in your opinion what are the best conditions for um, this uh, orgasmic birth to happen first and foremost the mother as the key initiator of this entire mm -hmm. experience on her body, on her mind, on an, her heart and spirit. In my opinion, she is the main objective. Mm -hmm. She's on center stage and her sense of readiness and primeness and this cultivation of trust in herself, in her baby, mm -hmm. in her partner, but more to that in life and also in the divine, you know, whatever it means to every person mm -hmm. and this allowing us to make a leap of faith because birth, as we, you know, you're, we are mothers to more than one kid. We know it. Every birth doesn't matter what was our previous experience. It asks for a leap of faith yes. because as I said, the nature of this landscape, is unknown and I, it's completely chaotic. Mm -hmm. It's completely unpredictable and we are afraid of the unknown. It's totally normal. It's a total mm -hmm. human right tendency, but there is a way com totally structured and practical um, to tap into this reservoir of trust and confidence within ourselves and this is why i'm a doula myself mm. whenever a mother or a couple reach out to me i always emphasize the importance it's essential first take care of your own readiness meaning check what is going on in your mm -hmm. internal landscape what are the fears what are the conditionings what are the 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 beliefs what are your ideas about mm -hmm. birth and let's start untangle them because there's a lot of you know we receive mm. a lot of mental baggage from our family yes. friends colleagues etc so really uh, if you would like me to go deeper into the the readiness itself what i do of course with pleasure but it, i, I mean <laughs> it, it's a it's so it's a deep, profound yes. process. It doesn't happen mm -hmm. like this. It takes the time to, in, to, to acknowledge what it is, to process it, to integrate. Um, and then uh, 
to your question, specifically to your question, what I personally believe and do is actually address those layers in our human existence, which uh, are more subtle, mm-hmm. meaning the spiritual, the emotional, the energetic, and the sexual layers, because they are the, we, about the physicality, we know mm-hmm. enough. We know about the drama and the pain and the contraction mm-hmm. and the effort. Yes, it's there. Mm-hmm. But giving attention and priming mostly of our emotional body. Why? Because the cervix, which goes through massive transformation during birth, it's connected to the heart. So when a woman is able to open up and really receive this tsunami of love that Mm -hmm. wants to come in, you know, and it's all related because when I say tsunami of love, it's also connected to the presence of oxytocin mm-hmm. during birth, a, a, a hormone of love, connection, safety. There is l- literally a tsunami of love that wants to come and flush us or to be generated from within and flush us. But most of us, we walk this earth not feeling loved mm-hmm. for many reasons. This is a podcast to itself. <laughs> We're not used to, we're not feeling safe in the presence of love. So imagine this tsunami that wants to come to you during birth or from within and from within. And we are like completely overwhelmed. We don't know what to do with that. So priming the emotional body Mm -hmm. prior to birth, opening the spiritual channel because birth, yes, it's you know life it's a union of polarities Mm -hmm. it is physical it is Mm -hmm. earthy it is blood tears and sweat but it's also divine and subtle and 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 there's a great sense of like i said before oneness and unity and fullness when our physical existence disappears Mm -hmm. there's a dissolve Dissolvement of the self, there's a dissolvement of our boundaries, and we unite with something so much bigger than us. Some will call it God, some will call it nature, mm-hmm. uh, life force, whatever. Yeah, there is this innate intelligence that is embedded within us that this intelligence initiates and do and does all the work. And we, my uh, perception of birth. You know, if you ask me one uh, tip or practice, what you can do, it's all about mastering the art of doing nothing. We need to step out of the way and let this intelligence do its brilliancy. Mm-hmm. But we are, so, you know, we are, we are living in a masculine world. And also as women, we adopt these qualities and birth. As, the, as a feminine territory, it asks for a complete set of qualities, skills, and, and, and virtues that are embedded in the feminine. But because, again, we operate in a, in a structure that asks for different qualities, then if we, are not, uh, if we haven't addressed and cultivated them prior, on the money time, on the birth itself, Mm. there will be a lot of friction, resistance, and therefore an escalated pain. So to your question, addressing those more deeper or Mm -hmm. higher layers within ourselves, these, they are the one to actually determine the physical manifestation, how we will perceive the intensity, the pain of birth, and also understanding why the pain of the purpose, the intention, everything, you know, it, it, there's an intention yes. to that. So knowing how to work with it mm-hmm. and how to allow ourselves to be taken into the flow and slowly, slowly imagine what a bliss it is, Carol, for a couple of hours or even a couple of days to be in a freaking trip birth is a trip is it's a liminal state it's a shamanic journey call it whatever you want it's the best high 
you know, in the world, naturally wise. Mm. So, so, yeah, knowing this and knowing how to let this exquisite uh, hormonal cocktail, um, yeah, that does all the difference. And this, this is very beautiful. I think you touched two very important things, the love. Um and uh, also that's the fact that the same hormones and the same of course uh, organs that are involved in birth and in love making yeah and i think it's the same there is a real parallel to do between love making where you need the right atmosphere the right conditions and and being in labor in your bubble and getting ready you know to reach this state where you are ready to give birth and it really echoes so you are a certified uh, hypnobirthing instructor as well as a doula and many other things and this really like echoes what uh, what i've learned in hypnobirthing that you know um it's also um, a matter of perception the pain you will of course perceive pain man, but it's serving a purpose and uh, as long as you you know understand this then you understand why you are feeling these things and everything and you were talking about the, the bubble and the zone and the trip and and my next question is about um, the people around you, your partner, your 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 team. Um, can, can what is the role they can play in you know? Um, I'll say this, facilitate maybe orgasmic births or giving you the right you know support to to make it happen or do nothing. I don't know. <laughs> Mastering the art of doing nothing. Yeah, the, yeah. As as, a, as the premise. Well, you know, same as making love, you, mm. most of us, it's a very personal choice, yeah. but they will choose to spend this time mm -hmm. in the intimacy mm -hmm. of themselves and their partner. <clears throat> of course, because from the dawn of times, yeah, uh, women gave birth, actually in the company of other women, mm. uh, th there, usually there was another person there. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, <clears throat> Because it's very uh, reassuring, mm -hmm. yeah. There's, I'm all for that. I always say, you know, choose your midwife or doula or obstetrician. You know, choose a person that you are feeling comfortable, uh, so comfortable with that you could be able to make love in their presence. Because this is the level of vulnerability, yes. intimacy, and experience exposure that birth takes us into so the the making the choice of care provider is crucial because if you will not feel comfortable in their presence you will literally close yourself up and you will not mm -hmm. open up so this is uh, after you know if we look at the mother baby and, and partner as this holy trinity as the, as the core of the event then the next layer would be um, a very precise choice of a care provider. Mm -hmm. There, like we said before, in the, the in the in the majority of cases, best would be to leave the experience undisturbed and uninterrupted, mm -hmm. like literally. Um, and this is where the partner steps in because they serve as a layer of protection, mm. you know? Yes. So they are the one, if there's any need to communicate, they are the one who are free to do so. Mm -hmm. Mothers are best to be left to themselves because mm -hmm. a brief one-on-one -on -one birth physiology, which I, I, you know, I wish for more care providers, especially in a hospital setting, to be aware of is the importance of leaving mothers to themselves because the secretion of what of this hormonal cocktail that provides altered state of consciousness, that provides this redrawing from the everyday and stepping into deep into ourselves, into the zone or, yes. you know, Many, many of us, we describe it as I went somewhere else, mm -hmm. I was high, I was stoned. And I see, it, you know, we go, but it's, we go into this very internal landscape within ourselves, very, very, very deep. Um, so what, what supports this secretion of cocktail is 
the reduction of activity of the neocortex. Mm -hmm. So every time you ask a mother a question, you pull her from yes. her concentration. So the partners, they serve as buffers, as okay. protectors, as advocators, and also for them to be super, to be aware of what is this spiritual uh, journey? What is this uh, shaman? you know liminal journey that the mother is going through so they know themselves also not to interrupt it mm -hmm. because we have we all have again this very human tendency to help to rescue to support uh, to assist but this in my opinion also perfect going back to the feminism mm -hmm. it also perpetuates this um uh, idea of women of women as being helpless and not being able to go through that but we are you know and birth and pregnancy are great vehicles in terms of self-discovery and sovereignty and ownership and again and this is also the reason why it's been so mistreated and manipulated because this world doesn't want women who are capable women who are competent, women who are strong, women who will not um, deal with the, with patriarchy. Yes, I'm doing this. I'm nodding because <laughs> I'm like, yes, 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 absolutely. A hundred times. Yes. Um, but yes, thank you very much. Uh, and that's important to know, right? because as a partner, you really feel like uh, exactly like you said, you want to do things, you want to, you know, be helpful. And uh, sometimes partners can feel like they are completely helpless if they are not doing something for the, the, the birthing person. But it's nice. And I think it's important to know that also doing nothing and just being this buffer can really be uh, helpful. Um, I if, if I may, I'd like to add to that, yes. that it, the ability to, to do nothing and to witness your woman, woman goes uh, through this transformation. Yes. It only comes when, as, when the father or mm -hmm. partner themselves, they prepared and mm -hmm. primed themselves as pillar of trust and confidence that the woman can lean onto. So this is why I see it's so important for the couple as a unit to go through this process of acknowledgement, understanding, um, and embodying these qualities, because then what is left to happen is the, literally the miracle of create, you know, you are, mm -hmm. you are able to witness the act of creation in the making. So it also involves a sense of readiness from the partner themselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Inbo, for sharing uh, this with you. And uh, we are almost uh, nearing the end of, the, of uh, this discussion, but um, I would like you to, uh, to give us maybe what would be your, your golden tip for, uh, for <laughs> expectant mothers and their partner? I would say, you know, Oh, it's a hard it's question. Quite hard. Yeah, it's a hard <laughs> question. <laughs> no. One tip, but I think it's also it's something that we brought up in the conversation before that mm. more and more people are awakened. More and more people mm. feel that there is more to that. That the truth lies elsewhere, not only in what we receive uh, from all around, and also from immediate circle. You know, because mm -hmm. people. Um, have their own experience which they love to share mm -hmm. especially the bad and negative and traumatizing ones um, but if anyone feels that there is more to it they don't know but they they feel like there there has to be another way because it doesn't make sense that birth uh, should be that traumatic um, experience I really warmly recommend to follow this calling and do some research just mm -hmm. to open up themselves to to what is there and i'm sure you know when this is there the the path unfolds step by step and you they will get to the right 
sources of information and, and to to make it happen yes to make it happen based you know because they feel the need to own their own experience mm -hmm. and to own their life mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's a beautiful advice it's a very very good one <laughs> you made it <laughs> um yeah i would like to 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 wrap it up um just very shortly what, what i understand and what i take away from this uh, discussion really is that under the right circ circumstances um yeah women can experience some sort of uh, maybe not orgasm maybe yes in some cases yes definitely but some sort of uh, ecstasy and um, yes it's not a, a, a guarantee but it's a possibility but i think it's really 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 important to hear these stories and maybe even if orgasmic birth is the big word um, it's important to know that yes, birth can be painful, uh, but it's not only that. Like, women can also definitely experience joy and bliss, and maybe even pleasure. And I feel what we see most of the time is like, yeah, birth is going to be painful, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, there is a lot of story just, to that too. Yep. You brought uh, an interesting point which I like to address really in a couple of sentences yep. because orgasmic birth doesn't mean that pain is not part of absolutely the yes <laughs> birth as a capsule of life it encompasses all faces and facets of human experience and pain and struggle mm -hmm. and challenge and hardship and effort and desperation are all part of it and they are all encapsulated into birth the thing is to know, like in real life, yeah? yeah, for me, birth is real life, you know, but like in, it's all about how we face mm -hmm. it. And once, and going back to birth, once there's the understanding skills and abilities to transmute the sensation of pain and also to minimize the conflict and friction and resistance that we talked about mm -hmm. before then indeed pain uh, shape shifts into a different expression but there's again there's so much to be said about it uh, <laughs> but it, it, I felt that it, it is important to highlight that because it's not about uh, you know the pleasure the ecstasy yes, yes the yes, orgasm yes. as in sexual orgasm mm -hmm. exactly. literal exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. but i think it was uh, it, it was pretty clear um and thank you very much for uh, for clarifying uh, a bit further um but uh, yes thank you so much for this session i think it was really uh, valuable and uh, um really uh, interesting uh, opening new uh, horizons also uh, for many people i guess um uh, let's uh, end this session maybe about oh i see a comment how do we deal uh, that's it birth equals real life how do we deal with life is how we give birth so beautiful yes that's very true Exactly. No, no, <laughs> Nushka, which we know each other oh, okay. and had her herself an or a beautiful orgasmic birth. I don't know how was your second, darling. We will uh, get in touch with that uh, separately from the podcast. Awesome. From the Where live. can we? Can you tell us a bit more about uh, your services and how you uh, support uh, um, expectant uh, parents? Well, well, there is my, my center. Yeah. in Amsterdam, in the pipe, it is called FM. Yeah. Beautiful as well, she says. Uh, yeah, so within my center, this is where I meet parents in person, mm -hmm. physically, in all services related to conscious conception. Mm -hmm. So how to bring this beautiful love and unity already uh, before. And of course, all the, the programs related to birth readiness, Mm -hmm. And so either there physically in yes. the space or online and also everything which is related to, to womanhood and mm -hmm. to the sacred feminine and continuing elevating and celebrating mothers on truly the, um, the goddesses that we are, you know? Uh, yeah. Lovely. I think 
I think we could have another session on the sacred feminine, but <laughs> we don't have but, Yeah, maybe time. we will. Why not? <laughs> but thank you very much, Inbo. And um, thank you to everyone who uh, uh, followed this session. Of course, it's been recorded. So I'm going to share it on our YouTube channel. Please uh, do subscribe and follow us for more uh, uh, awesome lives like this. Thank you so much, Inbo, for uh, this session together. It was really, really great. With great pleasure. I appreciate pleasure. it. Pleasure and <laughs> orgasm, Carol. <laughs> Awesome. And thank you, everyone. I wish you all a, a very beautiful day, sunny day, and uh, see you soon for another live. Goodbye.